Shalom, the Lord bless you. Welcome to Purpose and Marita Bliss with Pastor Honorine. Thank you so much for always coming back. Thank you for being a part of this family. God bless you. Today, I want to share with us an urgent prophetic word that God gave for someone. I know it is for someone. God says you are on the right path. He says you are in line to fulfill your purpose. You are on your way to fulfill your purpose. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Joseph, this, this, this prophetic word is coming in line with the story of Joseph. The Bible says Joseph was, was his father's favorite. Joseph had, he had a dream. His father bought him a coat of many colors and his brothers hated him for it. And when he had the dream, the envy and the jealousy even became worse. And, and the brothers decided to kill him, later on decided to sell him off as a slave to Egypt. When he got there, he served in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife accused him and he was sent to prison. All along, none of these things looked like the dream that God had shown him. None of these things resembled the, 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 the vision that he has seen. He was supposed to rule. He was supposed to have the others bowing down to him. And then now he finds himself from one state of, of, of misery to another. And I guess he must have been asking himself, where did I go wrong? Who did I offend? What did I do wrong? How did I offend God? Why am I in this mess? How did I fall to this level? And then God must have told him like he's telling someone today. God says I should tell you you didn't do anything wrong. You did something right. God says you are in line with purpose. You are on your way to fulfilling purpose. That's why you've been going through the things that you have been going through. As a matter of fact, Psalms 105, if you read from verse 16 to verse 23, it, it, it baffles me because it makes us to understand verse 17 specifically says it was God who sent Joseph to Egypt. And I'm asking God like, how can you say you were the one that sent Joseph to Egypt? I thought it was his brothers that hated him, that, 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 that sold him and, and sent him to Egypt because they wanted to get rid of him. God says he was the one that sent him. God says when it was time for the word that he had given him, for that dream to manifest, he gave the, 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 the king, he prompted the king, he gave the king a dream that only Joseph could, could interpret. This makes me to understand that most often the people we call enemies used by God, most often God will use them to bring to pass your purpose. God will use your enemy and haters more than he will use your loved ones. Because if God had instructed Jacob to send Joseph to Egypt, Jacob would not have done so because Jacob so much loved Joseph. So God needed to use the brothers who didn't like him. And, and, and at the end of the day, Joseph finds himself. But what is intriguing is the fact that while he was there, while he was going from one level of mystery to another, God says he was working out some things in him. He started this journey as just a dreamer. But somewhere along the line, he, he, he could interpret dreams. When he was in prison, he didn't just dream. He could interpret dreams. He could interpret even the dreams of others. And that's what took him to the palace. God says he has been in the process of proning you. He has been giving you capacity. He has been putting in you all that you need to fulfill that purpose. Because the purpose of God is not what you can do by your strength. The purpose of God is what he can do through you. So God will not tell you to do what you can do. God will tell you to do what he is about to do through you. Hallelujah. My spiritual father says when God talks to a man, he talks, he doesn't talk like, like he's talking to a man. He talks to a man like he's talking to himself. So if you think you heard God and what God told you to do is something you can do, then you didn't hear God. That must have been your mind. Because God will ask you to do what you cannot do by yourself. That's why he will, you will need him to fulfill that purpose. You will need him on that journey to for purpose fulfillment. So he says, you have not been in error. You didn't do anything wrong. No, on the contrary, you did something right. You are on the pathway that he says there is hope. There is hope because you are getting out of it. You are about to step to the palace. You are at the last phase. He says, I should tell you someone, you have gone through the pit. You've gone through the servanthood, Potiphar's house. You've gone through the prison. It's been a season of isolation for you. 
Your, your family turn their backs on you. Your, your loved ones turn their backs on you. Your friends turn their backs on you. He says, but rejoice. They t you had to be separated from them so God could work in you effectively. And God says, you are about to step into the palace. Hallelujah. He says, you are about to step into that palace. You are about to interpret the king, the king's dream. You are about to encounter the person that holds the keys to your purpose. God says he is aligning you to that person. He is aligning you to that person. He is linking you up to that person. You are about to step into the manifestation of the purpose. You have been behind the scenes all this while, but you are about to step into the manifestations of it. Hallelujah. And God says, I should give you this assurance. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. The message Bible says, he says, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. He says, plans to take care of you and not to, and not to abandon you. Plans to give you the future that you desire. He says, he knows what he has been doing. If it wasn't a mistake, you have not been in error. It was him all along. What you thought was your brothers doing it, Joseph, was your brothers hating you. It was God sending you to Egypt. You had to go to Egypt anyway. So God had to use anyone to send you there. You had to leave that place anyway. So God had to use anyone to, make, to help you leave it. You had to quit that job anyway. So God, since you were not aligning to it, God had to use anyone to instigate you so that you get fired. Because God wanted you out of there into that to start that vision, to start that assignment, to get into purpose. Hallelujah. And he says, I should share this scripture with you. Romans 8 and verse 28, it says, All things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. He says, it doesn't matter what has come your way before now. It doesn't matter what you had been through. It was all working together for your good. You are coming out better. You are coming out jubilating. All of the things that you've gone through, they are ending up in praise in the mighty name of Jesus. You are celebrating after this. You are celebrating. Your testimony is at the door. You are about to give a testimony that will make people say, this could only be God. You are about to encounter a God in your life that you never knew. He says he's about to show up and show you forth to the world. Hallelujah. I received that for myself. God says he's about to show up and show you forth to the world. You are about to be introduced to the world. You are about to, the, to be pushed to the world. You are about to be pushed to the world. Ah, God says he's about to serve someone hot to the world. Hallelujah. He says the preparation period is over. He says the period of cooking is over. You are done. You are ready for the world to consume you hot. Hallelujah. I hope this word meets the right person and on time. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And may he be gracious to you. Shalom. God bless you.